Starfire, the Starfire God. Hello, I am Popefire, the Starfire God. Um, this is our big uber duber Teen Titans Go video because everybody always asked me ever since Teen Titans Go come came out. Popefire, what's your opinion on Teen Titans Go? Oh boy. <laughs> um, you know when when Teen Titans Go first came out, I was disappointed. Um, because I do like the original Teen Titans series, while it did change from, you know, some of the aspects that I liked in the comics, I was a really stupid child, and I never even realized that the Teen Titans TV show that was on at the time was the same characters from the comic book I was reading. <laughs> but in my defense, in the Judas Contract, they rarely ever go by their superhero names. Like, it is always Corey, Dick, Donna, Victor. They they never went by like their superhero names. So obviously as an 8-year-old child, I was going to be a bit confused. Um mm -hmm. But that was that was the cartoon, the original Teen Titans cartoon when it was announced. It had a lot of backlash because of the anime uh style that was kind of used. And if you guys didn't know, the Teen Titans cartoon was actually inspired by Fully Cooley's animation. Um, I don't know if you two knew that. No, I did That's not. That's interesting. Yeah, it was it was inspired by Fully Cooley's animation. Um, the creator, and I do not know his name off the top of my my head, but he was a really big Fully Cooley fan. Um, yeah. Now, Teen Titans. One of the biggest complaints was actually about Starfire because her costume was nothing like the comic costume because instead of the because if you guys didn't know the first cartoon Starfire actually appeared in was a Teen Titans drug thing that never really even aired <laughs> they didn't even get voice actors for it um but in it they changed her costume by making it to where she you don't, you don't see any cleavage like all of the like all of her body it's like a swimsuit it was like a one it was a one suit swimsuit um so people were actually upset with how Starfire was changed because she no longer had the puffy hair, she had the straight hair, uh, she had this mini skirt and boots, and a lot of Starfire fans were actually upset with that. Um, and yeah. presumably our characterization being completely changed. Yes. <laughs> I, yeah. I, okay, the cartoon, I, I would say this, cartoon Starfire is closer to comic Starfire than New 52 was. Um, oh, that's, that's not all. <laughs> Uh, because while Starfire is a different character, she's still enjoyable, and the aspects that they did change were to make her more child-friendly, which I understand. Um, and also, they kind of de-aged her, because if you didn't know, the New Teen Titans Starfire is around 18 to 19. So, Cartoon Starfire is around 15. I think she ends the series at 17. Um, yeah, because I think the show starts with all of them being 15. I think well, I think Beast Boy is that. 13. I think Beast Boy's 13. I think Cyborg yeah. was 16 when the show started. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the series, Starfire is 17. So obviously she's a lot younger than um, her comic Pardon. counterpart. Mm -hmm. uh, so it makes a little bit more sense that she's not as experienced. Uh, this also means that she didn't experience some of the hard hardships that she did uh with comic starfire because cartoon starfire apparent from what i've seen she's was imprisoned at 15 um by it star bolts and stuff like that is actually native to tamaranians uh from, from what they've said because they didn't want to get into the dark backstory of of starfire even though we really do only see starfire and blackfire with um the star bolts and starfire is actually visibly upset about the eye blast so that clearly to me kind of seemed like she was her and blackfire had still gone through the prisms experiment but in the teen times ago comics um they mentioned that all tamaranians had star bolts which is which is fine i mean just changing i mean this is cartoon starfire it's completely different from comic starfire she still has aspects that could co that that you can tell that this is starfire but it's she is in her own ways her own character they basically um, made her kid friendly. Pretty yeah. much. Um, which which is fine. It, it makes sense to do that. Uh, yeah. But we're going to talk about Teen Titans Go because Teen Titans Go face similar backlash. Um, now, if you guys didn't know, and Speedy, you actually looked into this one. Uh, Teen Titans back in, I believe, because Teen Titans Go aired in 2011. Back in either 2009 or 2010, the fans, because the fans have petitioned 
for years. <laughs> Teen Titans yeah. has had a very large fandom for a very long time. And fans petitioned to get Teen Titans back. Greg Sipes, Beast Boy's voice actor, was encouraging people. He's like, guys, go, go, go. We can do this. We can do this. We can do this. So fans voted to bring Teen Titans back. Um, mm -hmm. Cartoon Network did in the form of the new Teen Titans shorts. Um, and what they told fans was pretty much pick your favorite short. Teen Titan, New Teen Titans was overwhelmingly the biggest <laughs> short. People wanted to see Teen Titans back. Um, Teen, New Teen Titans was made by completely different people than the creators of Teen Titans Go. It was more of a chippy style of the original series. And it also featured the same voice actors. No, um, New Teen, the New Teen Titans shorts actually even continued. I mean, yes, they did it in a more co comedic style, but it seemed more like a continuation of the original series with a few exceptions. I mean, there's this really cute short where Robin is learning French, so Starfire will give him a kiss. And technically, if this was a continuation of the original series, uh, Robin and Starfire would already be together as Trouble in Tokyo took place between season four and five. Um, but, <laughs> but it felt closer to the original series than Teen Titans Go did. Um, what Cartoon Network did was the, the stupidest thing they could have done. Fans had wanted the show back. And this is one of the reasons why I say people hate Teen Titans Go for the wrong reasons. Fans wanted the show. They wanted Teen Titans back. And instead of respecting the audience, instead of even going with new Teen Titans, which arguably, yeah, there probably would have been some backlash, but I don't think it would be as much as, as what uh, Teen, new Teen Titans Go has got. Instead of doing that, they pulled these two creators that have actively stated they don't care about these characters, that have actively said they don't care about the original series, and have actively gone out of their way to piss the original fan base off, the very fans that got them their show, because they forget that it was the fans that were petitioning, it was the fans that were voting, that were begging for this back. And one of the things I really disagreed with was Cyborg's voice actor pretty much told people to grow up and get over it. And I, I don't think they realize Teen Titans is very important for a lot of people. Teen Titans is one of the biggest series and coaching network. It's one of the biggest merchandise series. That's why they brought it back because they realized people would, would, were buying this stuff. Action shows re rely on toy sales. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and, and this is a lot of the reasons because Cartoon Network won't put all the funding in for action shows. They'll actually make it to where the toy sales will actually pay for some of it. Uh, one of the reasons why Young Justice failed, and that has a lot to do with Cartoon Network putting it at literally the worst time zone. They were putting it at like 7 or 8 in the morning. Really, really ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, but they were relying on toy sales, and Teen Titans sold merchandise. Teen Titans Go! will generally sell merchandise, which is why Cartoon Network pushes it every chance they get. Um, but what they did was they've had several episodes that have just gone after fans, that have made fans feel like you guys are losers. You, and, and, and yes, you probably shouldn't be actively going after creators and telling them you hate them for ruining your childhood. Um, the good part about your childhood is it's a memory, and you should grow into adulthood adulthood remembering your childhood but not really trying to force it on other kids um or on children because again if a child doesn't want to watch the original teen titans series they don't have to um there I, I mean I, i'm young i've had people tell me go watch he man go watch the original thundercats i try i didn't like it um it's one of those things that you had to experience as a kid now um I have had some children that have watched the original Teen Titans and absolutely loved it, but I can also understand how if you tell somebody like, well, they shouldn't watch Teen Titans Go, they should watch the original, the original is better. They're not interested in that because that's like an old man saying, oh, you should have done things in my day, you young whippersnapper. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my old man voice, but... <sighs> It, it definitely feels like, because Raggedy, you were the one that researched the creators, right? That's right. And it uh, was exactly what you said. Um, these are guys who had admitted they have only seen a handful of episodes of the original show. They, they 
purposely do not want anything to do with it. Um, they have also admitted to dumbing the show down because they think you don't yeah. need to think when watching cartoons. That's right. Um, just, uh, I hate yeah. that. <laughs> I, I, I'm, go I'm saying this with complete confidence. Teen Titans Go killed off the Teen Titans fandom. Something that used to be, because Legend of Korra did this with Avatar, um, something that was thriving and excited and ready for new content was completely annihilated by this. And Teen Titans Go fans aren't really the problem. A lot of the my viewers are Teen Titans Go fans, and they're lovely people. And I thank you guys so much for coming to my channel and seeking out more information on Teen Titans because I absolutely love you guys. I because I'm I'm always looking for new information on Titans, so I'm really glad that I'm helping other people get some information into their hands. But it yeah. does sort of suck when these creators make episodes. Uh, kind of making fun of you, and and you want to. I want to support Team Titans Go. I really do. I love Hayden. Hayden. She's one of the nicest women I've ever met. I love the voice actors for Team Titans, with the exception of Tara Strong, because Tara Strong has always been sort of, kind of mean. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you guys didn't know, on my twenty first birthday, uh, somebody had messaged Cyborg's voice actor and asked him to wish me happy birthday. And he did, and I thought I was going to die. <laughs> it was, it was. He he literally messaged me. No, he did it publicly on Twitter because I had a I had an old Twitter. Uh, but he messaged me. He's like, "Happy birthday!" And I'm like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> so I he, that was because if you guys don't know, Cyborg is one of my favorite Titans. I know I don't have a lot of art of him, but it's it's because artists kind of charge more for Cyborg because he's a little bit harder to draw. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But oh my god, I love the voice actors. They are some of the nicest people, um, with the exception of Tara Strong. And again, I've never actually met Tara, but from what I've seen, I've been a bit disappointed. And it didn't help that it was also for a character that, that I, you know, kind of have had a struggle with before from some of the stuff she's done in the comics. So it didn't help that Tara Strong has done some stuff that I'm like, that's kind of a jerk thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, but... All the voice actors. And she used to be Blossom on Powerpuff Girls, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Tara she's Strong. Done, yeah. Tara Strong has done. has voiced my childhood. She's been in almost <laughs> every show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she was Timmy Turner. She's been oh god, yeah, any TV show more than likely she's been in it. Um, my Little Pony. My for Little Bronies, that is. Yes, <laughs> yes, My Little Pony. She was in no that yeah she was in Danny Phantom. She was one of the bad guys. If I remember correctly, um, yeah, yeah, she's been and in now everything. She's Harley. Yes, now she's Harley. She's the definite Harley, like the definite Harley Quinn for a lot of people, um, and that's fine. Uh, she's also voiced Batgirl. Uh, yeah. I prefer Arlene Sorkin, but that's me. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of like the voice actress with Batman and uh, Harley Quinn. I know I'm gonna get a lot of flack for that, but I thought she actually did pretty good. Um, the voice acting wasn't the problem; it was just everything else. <laughs> well, the, the thing was with Tara Strong, and you can hear that it's Tara when she voices Harley. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that could just be me because you know I've paid attention to the Teen Titans voice actors, so when I hear them, I'm like, oh, that's Robin. Oh, that's Beast Boy. Oh, that's Cyborg. Oh, Starfire. Yeah. So it could just be me. Um, but yeah, Tara Strong is arguably the most popular female voice actress uh, currently, which is which is cool. It's nice that they got these pretty much grade A voice actors together, and and they're recognizable because you can hear them, and you're like, yeah. Yeah, I hear ya. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I think I think <laughs> to get sort of back on topic with Teen Titans Go, um, I think a lot of the problem was that there there seems to be this disrespect to the original fan base, and and I I think people hate it for the wrong reasons because they'll point at like weird episodes and I'm like that's not really a bad episode. Like I thought it was funny. Like that's this is a kids show after all. You need to focus on the fact that fans petitioned, fans made this happen. And Cartoon Network deliberately said "f you" and put it in different people's hands when the creators of New Teen Titans did such a great job. Because I thought those shorts were hilarious, and because they were so classy. Uh, with Teen Titans Go, they can get real raunchy. And they they kind of shot themselves in the foot yeah. away because it's possible for two versions of a property to exist at the same time. I mean, look at Batman. Well, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because Teen Titans Go has also helped the original Teen yeah. Titans. They killed off their fandom, but 
the original Teen Titans was aired for several months at uh, the earliest in the morning for Cartoon Network, which is about 5 to five, th- five to 6. Mm-hmm. And then in t- pretty much prime time at around 3 three to 4. It was either 2 to 3. One of those. It's, my time's a little different. So mm-hmm. sorry, guys. Um, but they were airing it at several times of the day. And they were doing it almost every day with the exception of the weekends. Uh, I don't think they would have done that unless Teen Titans Go had sort of brought brought Teen Titans back to people's minds. Because I will tell you one thing. It is very annoying when you are a Starfire fan and people tell you, oh, that's that orange chick from Teen Titans. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so at, least, at least with Teen Titans Go, they did bring it back in people's minds. So there is some good aspects of Teen Titans Go. Um, the bad aspects, the stuff that I think would justify people hating it is when they actively attack fans. And, you know, if they did it once, that would be okay. But it seems like they do it once or twice a season, uh, some seasons even more than that. Uh, and, and there also seems to be a very lack of understanding of some of these characters. Uh, for starters, Starfire's sort of written like a, a bitch. Um, yeah. I mean, one they, of the earliest episodes where Dro- Robin's learning to drive Starfire is pretty much summing up how to bully somebody. Laughing at other people's misfortunes is, is quite enjoyable. I remember that because I remember sitting there going, Starfire would never, never no. say that. Um, no. To, to kind of point on Starfire from Teen Titans Go, though, uh, I do enjoy that she says stuff other than Robin in this series because I, I tried <laughs> to do a drinking game of Starfire yelling Robin uh, the first <laughs> season of Teen Titans. She says it over 32 times. Holy um, wow. Yeah, so I uh, I was hammered uh, by like the fifth episode. <laughs> um, it was uh, it was not fun. I mean, I also was dumb enough to do that with Hokage and Naruto. And and the reason I hate Sakura from Naruto, she says it like six times in one sentence. Hokage, Hokage, Hokage. All he ever talks about is becoming Hokage. It's like Sakura, you damn bitch. <laughs> but no, um. And then there's also the problem where each episode sort of feels similar to where one Titan thinks one way and then the other Titans kind of make fun of them for thinking that way. And then at the end of the day, like the one Titan ends up being right and then they end up fighting some weird food-based villain. Uh, So, oh, there's a lot of food in that. There is. It's it's pretty much Cyborg and Beast Boy's defining feature is eating, burping, and fart jokes. That's that's their character in a nutshell. Yeah. That's uh I, I do work with children. They, yeah. they they do think that stuff is funny, but it's yeah. they find other stuff funny too. Yeah. Um yeah. I think I think the definite episode that I have absolutely hated was Waffles. That was the first time I, I watched Teen Titans go and I went, Oh my god, I hate <laughs> this series. Um <laughs> But uh, it, it, it does feel like it's annoying to be annoying, and it definitely feels like it tries to antagonize its audience. Now, not all yeah. episodes are bad. I mean, there's some really sweet episodes. When they when they did the Night Begins to Shine episodes, those were fantastic. Uh, if you do want to watch Teen Titans Go, definitely check those out. And then there's some, the Teen Titans Go to their movies. Oh my god, it's funny. It's got character development. It's everything that Teen Titans Go should be. Um I have not met one person that went in and said that was terrible or I was expecting something like, or they came back and said, you know what? That actually wasn't that bad. And it's, it's a really enjoyable movie. And that's saying a lot because I'm not like the biggest Teen Titans Go fan. Uh, my team in here is not the biggest Teen Titans Go fan. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, Dead Boy, how do you feel about Speedy in that series? Eh, I guess he's okay. I mean, honestly, I only saw like two or three episodes of the show. Um, there was the one where uh, Kid Flash was on the team and they were making fun of Robin's butt or whatever. And oh, was... no, they, they ruin characters like Robin is the worst character in that show and they just make him the butt of so many jokes and I feel yeah. so bad for him. Yeah. Um, and And... Okay, so you can tell that Teen Titans Go was started in the New, new 52 era. Um, the disrespecting your fans, the being kind of edgy, because I'm, I'm going to call the raunchiness edginess, because they think it's funny, but it's really not. 
Um, and, and yeah, it's probably funny for kids because I mean, we're adults, so we're pretty much out of the loop with, with what children like. I, I do work with children, but I can't definitely say like, yeah, children hate this because I'm not a child. I'm not going to pretend like I'm a child. That would be stupid. Mm -hmm. um, but there's, you can yeah. tell, you can tell it's New 52 from Starfire alone because uh, Starfire does have more traits in common with uh, New 52 Starfire than than she does with the original series, Starfire. Yeah. And it's like, because I watched the episode, so it's like, eh, not that funny. But it was kind of funny. Like, the one episode that was kind of halfway funny mm -hmm. was the one when Beast Boy was uh, singing to Tara, and he got her to got her to date him for a bit. And then near the end, him and Raven become a couple, and then they fight against Aqualad and Tara. Okay, uh, actually, that song was, was written by Greg Sipes, Years, yeah, it was, yeah. It was written years nice. before uh, the car the Teen Titans Go uh, used it. I wish because if you guys didn't know Hayden Walsh, Hayden, Hayden, excuse me, I cannot say her name. I get made fun of for that, but Is it Hayden um, or? Yeah, she, you know, she's even told me how to pronounce it. But you guys know how I am. <laughs> like she's like, oh yeah, this is how you say it. I'm like, yeah, I will be able to say that. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, she actually did a song called Mad Mad World, which was used during the um, Mad Mod Chase. Now, they went with the Hi Hi Puffy Yumi one uh, instead. But you can actually find uh, her version on like an Easter egg on the, se the season like extras. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I wish they'd bring that into Teen Titans Go. I feel like that would be really cool to see. I don't mm -hmm. think they will because it's sort of something that only like hardcore hardcore Teen Titans fans know of. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, there's so much. If I if I was in charge of Teen Titans Go, I wouldn't like the the first thing I would do is I would stop antagonizing the original fan base because I would realize I would recognize it was them petitioning, it was them asking Cartoon Network, it was them buying the merchandise, trying their very best to get the show back that caused Teen Titans Go to happen. And uh, arguably, yeah, sometimes fans are annoying. Sometimes they get upset about stuff. But you have to realize that these are people that wanted this back, that tried everything they could to get this show back, and you kind of just spat in their face. Yeah, mm -hmm. on top of that, you with your big potentially million dollar series, or or not, Well, Teen Titans Go is very che cheap to make. Yeah, it's but, Flash yeah, Animation you know, from Canada. You with your big TV station mm -hmm. picking at people with a TV show, that's like mean girling. Using a TV show to mean girl. Punching down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well... Uh, I mean, I usually don't like using terms like punching down, punching up, but since they use it a lot, that's exactly mm -hmm. what it is, by their own definition. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a big corporation punching down on, on their, their fa fan base, which which is a little ridiculous, but I mean, what can you do? They, or they, they are, they, maybe they're learning, because I don't think they've had a, a joke about the original fans in a while. I think they sort of realized that, wait, a lot of the fans that went to go see Teen Titans go to the movies were classic fans that you had sort of manipulated into going um yeah which, then, which yeah. did bother me we can bring teen titans back guys if you go see this movie and then so all these teen titans fans are like go see this movie go see this movie and i knew yeah. so many people that were like that went to see that movie only to bring the teen titans teen titans back and then it's only in a crossover so i feel like i i, I didn't see it in theaters uh because i didn't want to be i was waiting for a dvd because i was like i don't want to be manipulated like that and i would like to go because i want to go and not because i'd like to see the original series back and and truthfully i don't even know if i'm excited for this crossover or if i even want the original series back because if you guys didn't know the Terra arc actually concludes in the 2006 new teen times go comics um that's the one where Geo Force tries to mm -hmm. see us uh, see Tara at school, and Beast Force like, no. Yeah, yeah. It's um... better this way to leave her alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's some issues with the Teen Titans Go comics, to where you know some of them kind of read like fan fiction, and some of the art in the first few issues were really just bad. But th they got <laughs> they stuck with one artist, and it was really it was really good. Um, so I definitely recommend if you want a closure, the comics for the Teen Titans Go series kind of end on a on a kind of depressing note too. But you know, shows end. <laughs> Teen Titans Go is eventually gonna end. And uh, my biggest issue was that they played it 
they play it nonstop, and there was a time when they, they literally, there was an entire week where they would play nothing else. Um, yeah. And yeah. that was quite uh, obnoxious because I liked series like Gumball, and mm-hmm. I found it very annoying that I couldn't watch Gumball because Teen Titans Go was the only thing they would air. <laughs> and some of those episodes are really gross. The, the one where they're in Beast Boy's room and there's like sweat, that one, I, I despise that one. Mm-hmm. Oh, that one was so gross, and it makes me... <laughs> Oh, it just makes me so... Oh, it's so gross! <laughs> Stop thinking about it. I can't! Like, oh. <laughs> okay, okay. Do you guys have any closing notes before we end this? Yeah, um... <gasps> like, like I was saying earlier, I had never watched Teen Titans Go before yesterday. Um, right. And seeing it it kind of sucks and it's kind of frustrating because you could see some like glimpses of where it could be really funny. Like, I can't say that I hated every second of it. Like, (laughs) excuse me, the, uh, I I generally, I I genuinely laughed when Robin came out in the red X costume Mm -hmm. And they immediately start complimenting him and saying it's about time he updated his look. And he's trying to explain that, no, 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 this is just a disguise. It's I'm I'm going undercover, and they're all like, yeah, this the old suit was dumb, and that was funny. I like that, you know. And that was the same episode where they kept beating up Mammoth to get into the to the hive face and stuff like that. It reminded me of some of like the older Warner Brothers jokes yeah i i will admit that is one of my one of the episodes i really love is the red x episode now the problem with teen titans go is it shows potential but it feels like they're holding themselves back because exactly because they're angry at people and and you should never do something you should never do something out of spitefulness you should always treat your show as as a respect as respectful as you can and and honestly if you want to be spiteful don't use teen titans to do it yeah no just and, be a Twitter troll. And I yeah. was also kind of confused about, like, sometimes who the jokes were aimed at. Like, there's an episode based around the Predator. Mm-hmm. No, okay, that's an issue with Teen Titans Go. They yeah. make a lot of references to the original creator's childhoods. And I hate this because they use the excuse, this show is for kids. But yeah. they use references to things from the 80s and 90s. They wouldn't get any of those predator jokes. <laughs> they wouldn't. Um, no. And and you cannot use the defense. The show is for kids when all of your references are towards stuff from the eighties and nineties. As much as A Night Begins to Shine is such a beautiful episode, it's a reference to an eighties song. There's so many references to the eighties and nineties. This is obviously the creator's childhoods. Yeah. Childhoods. And you're essentially saying this show is for kids while also making references to things that the children would never understand. And I'm sorry, but if we're going with the younger kids, a lot of their parents were 90s kids and, and probably mm-hmm. early 90s, not, mm-hmm. or, or, you know, they were born in the 90s and grew up in the, the 2000, around the 2000s. Um, mm-hmm. So it's it's very frustrating to me that these same people are going, well, it's for kids, but we're also putting in 80s and 90 references. Like, no, you can't, you can't do that. You can't use the it's for kids thing if all of your references are not really towards modern things. Um, yeah. So, yeah. All right. I'm so sorry for interrupting you, Raggedy. No, no, no. It's, it's fine. You, you said exactly right. I mean, especially like they did a joke where it was really obscure. It wasn't even obvious Predator jokes. It was the famous where the Arnold Schwarzenegger and the other character clasp hands and their biceps bulge. Yeah. They, they did that in the show. No kid is going to get that. Well, I mean, it is a no movie. one. So maybe they'd get it because that one in particular is. A yeah. Movie. That's yeah, true. It's, but yeah. It's, yeah. It... And I remember there was that one episode where they were kind of taking jabs at the young justice where like young justice appeared and they were like, very serious and then like they had the titans get taller and become all like you know grim and serious yeah. okay that one is one of my favorite episodes because they're like well everybody wanted us to be serious so we're serious now it's like the original teen titans cartoon was not completely serious and and 
I guess it's serious for them because to them, serious is anything with, with an ounce of uh, brain activity involved. Uh, <laughs> no, not, not my words. They actually said they want the show to have like no, no thought <laughs> involved. Uh, when, when you watch it, you should not be thinking when you watch Teen Titans Go. Sure. So uh, that's, its reading that's... level should be for people who operate heavy machinery with their butt cheeks. <laughs> it, it's almost like they're going for like people who are high on pot, you know, middle of the night. <laughs> they just want to veg boy, out in front of the TV. This boy does seem a bit stonerish, um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, they 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 tend to forget that the original series had emotional moments that were very serious. I mean, mm -hmm. some of the episodes would just make you, when I was a child, I, I, I did cry when Tara died because I liked Tara. Um, mm -hmm. but some of the episodes were also very comedic and they even made a joke. Like, this is what I don't get. They're like, Teen Titans was too serious for us, but then they made an entire rip off of one of the season episodes where Beast Boy goes uh, and gets employed. Um, so I, I don't, understand some of the arguments they make of well it's a kids yeah. show but they make references to yeah. 80s and 90s it's yeah. uh it's and teen titans was too serious but then they actually rip off episodes from teen titans um i don't i don't get it yeah and they're all over the place. there were a few decent episodes that were mainly decent because amy wolfram wrote them yeah oh amy wolfram beautiful woman wolfram so. yeah she yeah, because she wrote like most, 90% of the original Teen Titans series. Yeah, there's also a lot of Easter eggs, but none of them are for George Perez and Mark Wolfman. Uh, and that bothers me a little bit. Yeah. Uh, because even the original series had like Soto, if you guys don't know, he worked, he was new Teen Titans, really helped with the series. Uh, Mark Wolfman and George Perez actually appear in the episode Go from season five. Um, yep, so that's I, the I would origin episode. I'm a bit frustrated that they don't use any Easter eggs from like the comics and uh, oh okay they did have George Perez draw in the episode books where they where there's this episode where it's like wait wait I found a book that's a comic book but is it a book a type of <laughs> is it a comic book a type of book not if does it count if it has pictures like that is I bought that episode off of iTunes for that one moment because I thought that was the <laughs> coolest thing I was like that is George Perez. That and is Wolfman and wrote the uh, Aqualad episode of the first season. Oh, of course she did. <laughs> yeah, Marv but... Wolfman. Yeah, he wrote the Aqualad episode. <laughs> that makes sense, actually. But, um, but it was such a cool moment just to see because they didn't even censor Starfire's costume. Like, there's titties and everything. It's it's pretty funny because <laughs> when you look at it, you're like, oh my god, they didn't even censor it. <laughs> That's but yeah do you have do you guys have any last things before we close off uh, okay my last thoughts is i've watched a few episodes of the series unfortunately it wasn't much my cup of tea and it's really sad and i really wish that we could have had something a little bit more similar to the original series come out <laughs> and but while i can understand the show is for kids what the main thing i don't like is the idea that tr kids must be treated as if they're idiots when at least when I was a kid growing up, shows expect you to think a little bit, or yeah. at least you watched it a few times and you go back and rewatch and you understood it better. Because I mean, there was even an episode of uh, Teen Titans O three that uh had Star, I think it was Starman or someone similar to him, where he was like this racist character that who kept calling, yeah, him, where he kept calling Starfire Trock the whole time, and you find out that it was actually a racial slur, and when Robin and him found out about it, they were very pissed. I love that ending because Starfire pretty much says if people say racist stuff, like just move on. Not everybody's gonna think that way, and you need to you need to be around people that that don't hate you for your simple race. And I love that because Starfire still saves him. She doesn't she doesn't just let him die just because he's racist. Well, some of these SJW characters would do that. They'd be like, this guy's racist. He gotta die. Um, instead, Starfire, even even if she even if she only changes his mind a bit. She changed his mind because even when he goes, well, you're you're a lot different than the other Timberidians. She's like, there's nothing different about me. He realizes from the other Titans that he's like, oh, I, I effed up. And <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the, the, it even had good episodes like that, which can give a good, nice little message to kids while also not being, not treating them like idiots. 
Yeah. All right. Do we have anything else we'd like to to add before we close off? Um. Yeah. It it just you know it kind of sucks because like I was saying before, there's there's glimmers of of goodness in this show, but it's surrounded by a lot of bad. You yeah. Know? That, well, that's what makes it suck even worse, is that yeah. it could have been good. Raggedy, What's... I do have good news for you, though. Oh, no, what? This Friday, we are reading Dear Mom and Dad, and I think you will love that one. Awesome. Yeah, last book. It is, it is one of the best New Teen Titans issues. I think the only one that I would... I, I, I mean, the, the, it's, it's the best standalone one. I think the only one that can really beat it is Who Was Donna Troy. Uh, which yeah. which uh, we'll probably do at a later time. Uh, just be prepared for my book because I'm going to make sure that I can pick the worst Teen Titans book <laughs> I can find. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I'm gonna I'm just gonna so so enjoy this week. Enjoy. All right. Let me guess. There's going to be a book with Danny Chase in it. <laughs> Ooh, I know. I wasn't. I was actually going to do New Fifty Two, but <laughs> now that you mentioned it. I kind of want to do one with Danny Chase. Um, you know what? For mine, we're going to do the first interjection of Danny Chase as a Titan. How's that? Oh. <laughs> Rough. <laughs> Thank you, Dead Boy, so much for. You know, that's what they should bring in on Teen Titans Go. I mean, Danny Chase is perfect for that series. <laughs> All right. We're going to close it off, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, my Patreon is in the link below. The links for Dead Boy Speedy and Raggedy's Twitter are also in the description. Uh, please check us out because we do Teen Titan streams almost daily, with the exception of sometimes we'll take breaks, uh, depending on how things are going. Thank mm -hmm. you guys so much for watching, and see all of you guys later. Yeah.